Today, you'll get an opportunity to meet some of the Juicy Peaches. Shataka, Mikhail the Diva, Priscilla, and of course, it's me, Unique, the Juiciest Peach. All right. So we are back like I promised you we would be. And with a couple of my sisters, them juicy peaches. And we're going to just have a conversation. This is what we do and what we do best. We got Mikhail, a.k.a. the diva in the hey. house from Cali. Yes. And my sister, Scylla, thick Scylla is in the me. house. She is down <laughs> here in Georgia with me. So hey, hey. Georgia peach. Yeah. And we, in juicy peaches, we have a lot of conversations. And I right. think it's a part of who we are. And one of the things that really sets us apart from a lot of the groups, one, we're SSBBW group. There aren't a whole lot of SSBBW groups. Right. And so when oh, we are together, oh. we are able to find commonalities that we don't find with everybody else. True. And we mm -hmm. can, you know, be open and share things about our lives and get tips and tricks. And one of the pieces calls them fat hacks. You know, things that you do just that, that we would understand that we need Definitely. to do. And, you know, we share those all the time. And I was talking to uh, the Peaches recently, and I told them about a date that I had. You guys, I don't know if you guys remember this, but it was one of the dates, oh, I think the date, like the, the pivotal moment in my dating career when I said, some shit got to change. Right. Um, th this has got to Men have got to understand that if you like supersized women, we have some unique needs. And yeah. we are not going to apologize for it. You know what you're getting into when you started pursuing me. You cannot expect for 90 inch hips, 100 inch hips to be on a 160 pound body. It doesn't right. work that way. So you got to understand that when we're going out and we're going to movie theaters, that one seat is not going to do it. We are oh. going to have to have a seat that's going to, the arms going to raise up. Mm -hmm. And I remember specifically this date, um, this guy, I was dating, he was a good guy. He was um, good guy. He had gone back to school. So he was just working part-time, um, trying to, you know, still be dating while pursuing his goals. Everybody can respect that. Mm -hmm. um, and he had said to me, he said, he knew I like seafood. And he said, I want to take you to a really nice place. My brother told me about this place. And so I made us a reservation and, you know, let's go on, you know, such and such a day. And I was excited. I said, okay. And I worked all day. I was tired, but I said, no, I'm gonna go. I promised him he's, you know, got this mm -hmm. situation. He saved his money. It's supposed to be this great restaurant. So I got cute because that's what we do. You know, I'm right. Cute. right. My skirt too tight. Right. Way too tight. My heels too high. They way too high. But I'm going and I'm going in here and I'm gonna just look good and enjoy this, you know, this dinner. We got there and there was a line outside. It was a it's a popular restaurant in Atlanta near the airport. There was a line outside. We walked oh. past everybody and they looking. You know how they look when you you know swaying them hips. Mm -hmm. I'm looking too. And I'm looking good. And so I'm walking. <laughs> and we get in the restaurant. And what I'm accustomed to saying, what I had been for years, is can we have a table and not a booth? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not sliding in a booth. I want to make sure I put this up front because so I can say this. And so I said, can I have a table, you know, and not a booth? And, and the waitress says, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She said, come on, I got you. So she walks us to the middle of the restaurant. And as mm -hmm. I'm looking around, I realize they're all our tables, but they're the high tables. Right. So you got to get up on those. What's the name? I can't get up on them. Yeah, so yeah. I'm already just like, oh, here we go. <laughs> so I'm trying to scan the room to kind of look around to see if there's any alternatives. They're not. He's excited. Mm -hmm. So he goes, you know, she opens to pulls my seat out and I just kind of scoot next to it. I'm not sitting in the seat because I can't. I can't get up mm -hmm. there. I'm not going to, you know, try it so it can come teetering right. down on me. So now right. I'm just kind of standing near the seat, not sitting in, in it. He sits down and he's in the seat. So she's giving us the menus and he's, he's just kind of looking over. You know what you want? And mm -hmm. I'm thinking to myself, does he see I'm still standing? 
Right. I can't, I can't sit in the seat, mm-hmm. but I don't say anything to him. And, and as I reflected on it later, I don't know why I didn't say it in that moment. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't that I lacked confidence or self-esteem. I didn't like any of that, but I didn't say anything. Yeah. So, and mm-hmm. that was the downfall of this whole date because the whole time I was standing. Like literally wow. the salad course, we had drinks, we ordered crab legs. So I'm crooking crab legs, standing up looking right stupid. Um, people are coming behind me and on the side and they're trying to get into their tables. So when they do, I'm scooting up. Y'all okay? Everybody okay? Okay, okay. And he's just talking. He, he's not, you know, saying, <laughs> you okay? You know, are you gonna be okay? He doesn't say anything with that salad. People are coming back, you know, they've changed out. Somebody else is on the other side. I got to scoot over. And I'm at a disadvantage because part of me and my size is that when I'm in restaurants, I'm always looking to make sure I've got an exit. Mm -hmm. How am I going to get out of here and maneuver without taking the whole table with me when I try to scoop these hips through there? Right. But Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 you know, I'm not facing the other part. So it's only one, two tables behind me. The rest of the restaurant is on this side. Mm-hmm. So I'm in, I'm, the whole time I'm just getting a little bit of anxiety that I've, I've never had before. But it's just mm-hmm. like now, first of all, I'm standing up this whole time. Now my feet are killing me. Right. I'm, I'm steadily scooting in and out. I see Shataka's here. Hey, babe. I'm steadily scooting in and out. And, um, you know, my side is hurting. This day mm-hmm. is not going well, but he right. is feeling great. He's looking at me. And so for him, he got the best view of the house. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> I ain't got nothing. I'm in pain. Right. And, and I'm okay. thinking then too, that once it's over, now I got to turn around and face everybody who has undoubtedly been looking saying, who the hell, you know, I wonder what she looked like and why, why mm. she's standing. And do he know she's standing? And I just felt like if mm-hmm. I can only have... You know how you you can be in a, a better situation, but you turn around and somebody has got an eye or a face that's just kind of comforting. That mm-hmm. they, you know, it's like mm-hmm. I understand, sis. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. And I was just hoping there was another big girl on the other side when I turned around and maybe understood that can give me some eyes that say, "I feel you, sis." Mm-hmm. Right. You have that, you know. So I turn around. And I'm, you know, got my head up, trying not to look at all these people. Cause I'm thinking, of course, that they thinking, the hell was she doing? And standing up the whole time. The whole right. time we've been in here. Yeah. And we left yeah. out and and again, I didn't have any preparation. I couldn't make an exit. I just had to go. And so I'm just, excuse me, excuse me, sucking it in, moving out, excuse me, excuse me, until we get all the way out. And I just felt awful about that. Yeah. We never mm. said anything. I don't know why he didn't. I don't know if he felt like it was awkward. He didn't know what to say. Yeah. But I don't think I did him a disservice. I, as, a, a, um, I think I did him a disservice by mm-hmm. not just saying, this isn't going to work. Right. This restaurant right. isn't going to work. It's a lovely restaurant. I appreciate the effort you put, but it's not, I'm uncomfortable. And just let's go find someplace else. Because yeah. the next person that he's dating, you know, he's not prepared. If he likes big mm-hmm. women, then, you know, I, I sometimes think when guys say they've dated all these big women and then they don't even understand any of the dynamics, I'm like, they ain't teaching right. you. Like, yeah. what are they teaching? Mm-hmm. But then I mm-hmm. thought that, that was my time to teach. And mm-hmm. I did. And so, yeah. you know, is that going to change? And I remember saying that day, that's not going to happen again. I'm not going to yeah. be in that situation. I'm not going to let him walk away not understanding the importance of making sure that these, you know, logistics are in place so that mm-hmm. we can both have a good time. Because it's right. not like I was fearful of having another date. I had another date a few days later. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't that, it was just that I, I mean, I still don't know. I still don't know why I felt like that and why I didn't yeah. say anything, but I know that I've never been that way since. And so mm-hmm. I'm glad that that was my lesson um, and that I learned and that I now go into places or I, I approach every day saying I'm not going in unless I know where I'm going ahead of time. And then mm-hmm. I have to do the research. Yeah. And I've learned how to go to Google and Google is a, is my best friend. I it's a wonderful Google thing. Before I used to go and try to just see if I could see the restaurant or the, you know, the chairs or whatever. And now I've learned that Google has 
um, categories when you click mm -hmm. on the place and they'll say the food, the menu, the vibe. And the vibe yeah. always has the seating. What does it look okay. like inside? And so I always go and I'm looking first for the vibe. Let me see if this got some seats I can, you know, um, is it going to accommodate me? Let me see if I can tell mm -hmm. what the, you know, the entry looks like. Do I have mm -hmm. to walk up 12 stairs to get upstairs in this place? Is there an elevator? Mm -hmm. And, you know, how are we doing those things? And I think that a lot of women, and you guys could, you know, just kind of chime in on what your experience has been, are sitting on the sidelines of life because they don't know. It's the fear right. of the unknown. You know, I want to mm -hmm. go, but I don't know if it's going to be, you know, seating is going to be good for me. I don't know if I'm going to have to walk two miles from wherever you park. You know, mm -hmm. so many of those things. And I think mm -hmm. that there may, may not be just understanding that there are ways to figure those things out before you go. Yeah. And that you can go and enjoy yourself. Yeah, I was going, I'm going to chime in right here. Uh, one of the experiences, I, I know Google is, I call Google my best friend when it comes to certain things. But before I started Googling though, I whether I was going out with friends or it could be even after, you know, we were talking about going to some, going somewhere to eat after church. I would always find out where it was. I would call them and oh, I would ask this question right here. I would ask, first I used to ask, does your uh your, does your chair have arms mm -hmm. there was a couple of people that didn't understand why I was asking that and I could uh, like they would say huh or and I was like okay but I finally would get them to understand why I would I progressed from does your chair have arms to then I would then uh, when time went on I would say okay how can I make this where they really get in this and when I thought back on, on it I was like I don't know if that was the best way then I started at telling them I was bringing someone with me who had a disability and they needed a chair without arms, right? right. But I thought about that would really be better to have it with a chair with arms. But at any rate, that was my way. Then mm -hmm. I progressed to letting them know I was a full-figured woman. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. it took me to the, because the first reason, and I'm going to be very transparent, as confident as I am, okay, I had to get here. I wasn't born with this confidence. I progressively got, mm -hmm. got my size. Uh, due to the disorders that I have and so I, I did I started out when I got plus, plus size I used to I could fit in certain chairs right and then it wasn't it, I, I wasn't too uh I didn't have to prepare like I do now right. you know right. and so as time went on I I've had experiences where I've walked into places and I'm looking around see we do those of us who are know about this look around strategically you know what I'm saying? Where's the best way? I totally understand that aspect of trying to find the best route for myself. Try, even when I'm going into a place, I'm looking, what's the best way to get me there? Because when they tell you, come on, follow me, I'm looking at skinny girl or skinny guy go right. through places, you right. know, and right. I can't follow you. Yeah. So I do, I, I begin to ask for tables where I would ask them, is the table attached to the floor? Mm. Because you can give me a booth, but if that, I can, I, I would actually love a booth because I, there's times even with certain chairs, even if it has no arms, it might be those small circle right. chairs, mm -hmm. those wooden chairs right. that dig into my, under my thighs, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes even ballroom type chairs, the metal digs in because I'm so wide. Mm -hmm. So I've mm -hmm. sat uncomfortably many times. I've sat, I've even had to teach my friends. And some of my friends have apologized to me over time because they didn't really understand that I have to prepare to go to a place, you know? Mm -hmm. And I got very transparent with them. So some of my friends would call me and say, Sister, do you want me to see if they, or do you, first of all, do you want to go? And I'm like, the only thing for me is accessibility as I progressively got where my mobility was being affected, you know? So, you know, with the seating, that has been something, I, I think that one of the, the things I never wanted to do was to be sitting on a chair and it collapsed underneath me. I, I didn't know. want to get right. bruises because I've gone through that before. Mm -hmm. So th the whole seating thing, I remember years ago, I had, 
I had it. I uh, someone invited me to a nice restaurant. And I, and I, I laugh about it now because since I can identify with that, you didn't tell us, right? Because it, when it, especially when it's the first date, you know, and you're like, I just wasn't comfortable saying at that time. So I thought, okay, we're going to get here and I'll just strategically myself kind of tell them, you know, and so, and I was going to tell them in a way like, oh, I want to sit over there. Oh, that looks like a like, nice spot. Well, when we got there, there was the high chairs. Okay. So I stood there and I looked and the, the, my eyes told the story. He was like, oh, come on. He was like, I'm, and he went to pull the chair out and I just looked at him and I, tr I in my mind, it wasn't that I looked at him with the, I tried to give him the sweetest look without just fake shaking my head and saying no. And he looked at me and he looked at the chair and he was, <gasps> and it was like the look on his face was oh, like, oh my God. God. And he began to, he mm -hmm. just, he was so sorry. Yeah. He he was apologetic. He's a, I am so sorry. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. I said, there are other restaurants. We can find something. Mm -hmm. And so when we walked out, we went just a little further down and he went and he said, hold on one second. He went in and it was a great place. And, and, and he, we talked about it after that. Okay. And mm -hmm. he said, I'm going to tell you something. He said, that will never happen again. He said, I, he said, you tell me or I will make sure that they have been, he said, tell me what you need when we go someplace and I'll make sure that before we, I even make, you know, invite you, if I'm thinking about it, I'm going to make sure that, I, that I look at, look, and I'll even ask you, do you feel comfortable? See, that's the mm -hmm. kind of, of, of receiving, that's the kind of person we would want to be yeah. dating, you know, and mm -hmm. And understanding that every one of us are different. Yeah. I, if I could have, well, I have a hundred inch hips. Uh, my sisters on here, all of us may have somewhere, but, but from the lower to the to, to my range. Mm -hmm. But all of us, there's some that have don't have as many mobility issues as others. Some may have mm -hmm. maybe able to walk a more a little bit more distance or further distance. Some may be able to get into certain chairs right. or don't have problem with certain chairs, and then there's other of us who uh, of us who do. So also understanding that you really need to get to learn the person yeah. that you're with, yeah. the con the, what mm -hmm. makes her comfortable, you know. And then, you know, and I won't even go because there's so much more of this to unpack. But that seating thing is very, very, very. Uh, necessary to know we have to be comfortable since you standing that long like in my mind I'm already listening to you like oh my god when is he going to say something did he really know you know <laughs> that just yeah to me that just did. Did. And I think that what you just said um was really important not only do we need men who are going to understand it respect it and then do better but we mm -hmm. got to do a better job of communicating Yes, so I did not communicate it. And like I said, I did him a disservice. But yeah. I think that the problem is that so many of us think that, well, society has just done a, a job on this. And just, yeah. you know, um, everybody's fat because they deserve it because they was eating too much. I don't give a damn if I was eating too much or whatever it was from. Thank the reality you. still right. is that I still have a place in this world. And right. I have to be respected no matter what. I give respect. I deserve respect. That's and right. We all we don't have to apologize. There's no need right. to apologize or ask somebody to excuse our weight and and please make a you know, pardon me because I'm no right. No, this is not going to work for me. There, yeah. like you said, other restaurants, other venues, other places that you can go and have a great time that Absolutely. are going to work for us. Mm -hmm. and we just got to be able to say that. And if yeah. the person does not receive that then that's not somebody we should be spending our time with. And that's Absolutely. just not even a date. It's a friend, a family, whomever. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. if you're okay with me not being okay, then we're not okay. Right, mm -hmm. right. It's, it's so very important that we, uh, you know, that we are with people who, uh, that we, uh, when we're dating or when you get into a relationship that you are with someone that, is going to be understanding. And you know what? Sometimes it's ebb and flow. You mm -hmm. know, like I would love to go get on a jet ski. Mm -hmm. mm, but am I gonna be able to get on a jet ski? Right. You know, right. You know, can we, you know, in the in the 
in the adventures of dating, I'll call it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when you're discovering, you know, each other. There's things there. There are things that SS BBWs and BBWs are going to have limitations in. Right. Things that we, you know, mm -hmm. they, they don't build everything to fit us. Right. Just like a very tall person. Right. Yeah. You know, I'll go right into planes if I may. If in in the mm -hmm. travel experience, may I go there? Mm -hmm. Sis, listen. When it comes to seating and the travel traveling, the very tall people and 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 people of size. Yeah, mm -hmm. have challenges on planes. Yeah, yeah, and because I'm not extremely tall, you know, I didn't even think about like people who are very tall who have issues because their knees are pressing right. up against the seat. Right. In my yeah. situation, my knees press up against the seat because there's so much of my backside. Right. So I sit right. forward, mm -hmm. you know. Right. So that's right. one aspect. But just to just to show you that there's people outside of plus size people who deal with planes. I learned that I needed to get a second seat. I used to be very scared of flying. I'm gonna be very transparent. Before I started traveling with my choir and singing, I had flown once with my granny when I was, we went to Arizona many years ago mm -hmm. and I was like 15 years old, much, much smaller. Mm -hmm. And the only thing I was I was scared of getting on a plane was the fact that it was go, something off the ground. I can't control it. I can't mm -hmm. tuck and roll, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I was really scared of flying. For a very long time okay. and when I decided to go to Texas was one the first year and it was the year that the incident happened where they were transitioning into the 9-11 thing mm -hmm. and oh. I decided my girlfriend told me who was who flew all the time she said sis she said did you buy a second seat I said girl these seats are three hundred fifty dollars for round trip I said I don't have seven hundred dollars to I have to budget for this you know so we're having that girlfriend talk and she like sis she said I really think you need to go to the airport and find out how they handled it handle that and oh, so cool. I went the day before and there were cameras there there were you know the media was there and I put on this blue outfit I mean y'all about people y'all know about people staring I put on this blue outfit right. one of my girlfriends I hadn't talked to called me and was like sis were you at the airport she said, I, you have on blue? And I was like, oh my God. So someone had zoomed in one of the media mm -hmm. people to my backside. Now that I'm telling that part because mm -hmm. of some of the things we even deal with when we're out in public, you mm -hmm. know? And so right. the day I went just to simply ask at the counter, I waited in line to ask, what do they do about if I can't fit in the seat? In the seat? I was told at that desk that I had to buy a seat. I just felt like we shouldn't have to pay for an extra seat. Why are these seats not big enough? You know, why right. are these seats not even more inches than they are? Why is there not a, a seat for someone of size? You know, yeah. you know, there's disabled seating. That's an argument that we need to have about society mm -hmm. in large and in reality is. And I know that NAFA is doing some things to work with the, the larger, yeah. you know, um, sort of uh, concern for all people mm -hmm. of size and inclusion. Mm -hmm. um, but that's right. structural. So right now we can't control the structural because, you know, but the, and we can't sit out life because of the structure. Mm -hmm. We've got to figure out the ways. And so it's just like you said, it's about, okay, you had to buy another seat. We know that Southwest offers an option that they will give you your money back for the second seat. Um, so there, there are ways, and I think it's just yeah. important for all of us, for everybody that's watching this, to just understand that, no, the world is not made for us. It's yeah. not. And yes, that there, there we've got some challenges, but we live our lives every day abundantly, going out, mm -hmm. doing things um, for venues, out to dinner, on vacations, just like our Juicy Peaches just got back from the Dominican Republic. Those people aren't used to seeing us there. Yeah, I used to seeing big people traveling, especially in large groups. But mm -hmm. until we get out more and, and let them see that we are out, we can't expect a lot of things to change because the world is still built on supply and demand. Right. And so if we got to be out there to demand it for them to supply it. And that's mm -hmm. also time. We, we've got to get out there. That's also mm -hmm. why I believe, well, well, we'll talk about that later, but. I just believe that we really do got to get out there. Go on, Shataka. Jump on in. You don't have to. I don't know if my mic was on. Is, is my mic on? Yeah, you now. Yeah. Okay. And like you said, just not only supply and demand, but that dollar. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. what we, when they see consumers, they made bigger clothes because they saw us buying clothes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So we have, like I said, in order for uh, the resorts and places to pay attention mm -hmm. to our, our demands and our needs, we have to spend our money. And they, they see they're losing money because, oh, I was going to come to your resort, but you don't have accommodations for me. Right. Mm -hmm. they, you're doing mm -hmm. with speeches and, and actually communicating with these resorts because it's not you think about. It. You know, if you if you don't know somebody or you don't have a family, most people are not even. It's not on their radar. Right. right. True. Right. Difference that people have. You know, it's, it's not on your radar. It's not your life. It doesn't affect your sphere. You don't really consume mm -hmm. our. So it's really up to us to make the noise and not in a negative way, but just being right. that squeaky wheel get the grease. So absolutely. Yeah. And show that there's there's a dollar there's a dollar assigned to you not addressing his need. That's yeah, right. I totally agree. That is good because there we we our our money is green too. Yeah, and we would like and we right. don't mind. You know, I I had uh even even going back to the uh the flights, I did I was in school and I had I was so passionate about it that I actually did a speech on it and it enlightened my classmates and my uh professor about the the experience and I had even thought you know rather than make us pay for a second seat what about just a percentage of the seat the the taxes on the seat just speaking hey you know there's a I understand the monetary value of this other seat you know but not pay make us pay for an entire other seat you know so and I definitely know that the, that it's Definitely about the dollar, but and I definitely agree that we we need to say something. You know, say just continue to to ask them, talk to them, reach out to them, um, and make sure they understand that there is a need and we want to be treated fairly. And it's funny, uh, sis, that unique that you said. Uh, so you said something earlier about not apologizing. We don't have to apologize. And it was, it's funny because I was just talking about this uh, yesterday when I was sharing with a friend of mine because of experience experience I had where I had to miss uh, um, going to uh, do some poetry because the accessible ride left me. Mm -hmm. And I broke down crying because I said, I'm so sick of them treating me this way, treating us this way. You know, when it comes to if I'm asking for the vehicle that I need, Mm -hmm. I've done the writing, I've spoke to corporate, all these things, and I'm not done because I am going to participate even in a panel discussion where I'm talking to, to, to people, the, you know, corporate um, right. officers, there needs to be change, you know, and us saying something, us just going, us traveling, mm -hmm. us, you know, going out to these restaurants or places like that, accommodate us. It's, I don't, it's not that hard. If they can make it, right. then get it because we're going to come, you know? But and, are and we going to come? Mm -hmm. uh, because I think I'm struggling a lot. I'm three years into Juicy Peaches mm -hmm. and Shataka will remember. And, and I think all of you probably before I started and me saying, I know that it's going to be a challenge to get yeah. BBWs out. I know that it is. Because mm -hmm. logistically, it's not built for us. The world isn't. Right. You know, we've been so just kind of beat down, and um, and and most of us are feeling just a little bit downtrodden. Yeah. And, but I said, if I can show them that I'm going to do the work, we're going to make sure that every venue that we go to is going to be accessible. Mm -hmm. and you are going to be able to enjoy yourself. You're not going to have to have any worries, and we're going to have a good time. And it's going to be welcoming right. and it's inviting. And I think yes. that even from the very beginning, everybody that came to any event would say, Juicy Peaches is like family. Like I felt like I've known them forever. Yes, mm -hmm. that's but we're, true. We're still, we're three years in and we're still not getting the women out as much as I had hoped. And so mm -hmm. I think that it's, yeah. like, certainly we had the pandemic, huh? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of fear. And it, it really comes from childhood fear from not being like chosen to be on the team or something mm -hmm. like that. So um, a lot of these places, like I wanted to say um, my first experience, I was with a guy on, on a date and um, he was more mindful of um, the seating arrangement than I was. Because at, at first I was able in Florida, 
I can go anywhere and sit and not have a problem. But when I came to Georgia, it was like, I didn't know in my mind that I had to think about seating. Mm -hmm.